Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again. We have been having such a great time in the studio the last few days to recording this, and I hope that you enjoy it. Go back and watch the last few episodes so that you can get caught up to where we're at today. We've been talking about marriage, family, ministry, and everything that happens with children, everything that happens in between. I have my lovely friends here today helping me. I have Pastor Elia from Porterville, California. She pastors over there. If you're looking for a great church in that area, please go to um, go to their church. It's a great church. Mm -hmm. And then I have my beautiful sister, mm -hmm. Elizabeth, my little baby sister. <laughs> she's the children's church pastor for our church, and she's doing an amazing job. So where have we, what have we not talked about the last <laughs> right. few days? We've talked about everything. You need to, seriously need to go back. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way you can get an alert and know when we're on. Amen. Um, I want to kick off where we were. And if Pastor Ellie, if you will read um, Hebrews 12 too, because it's so important that we know that in order for us to have a good marriage, in order for us to have children that serve the Lord, in order for us to know that what we're called to do, um, we're doing it with purpose Amen. and plan. Not just not just living this life with what we want to do, but living this life in a way that ple is pleasing to Amen. the Father. And living a life that, that leaves a mark and leaves the favor of God on our lives so other people could see the favor of God on us. And I really love this passage of Scripture. If you could read it for me, Hebrews 12, 2. Amen. It says, Looking under Jesus, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Because you can, it, um, I like what this note says. It says, you will never go any further than your relationship with Christ will take you. Mm -hmm. You won't. Amen. Jesus loves to bless marriages and future family life. He does. Amen. If we do not have Jesus at the center of our lives, we cannot know what it is to have a fulfilled God, God fulfilled life in the plan of God for our life. Amen. We, we won't know that. Amen. And, you know, like I said, we've, we've been talking about all these things, but I want to throw some questions at you ladies. We've, we asked um, several times to, for people to send questions, and they did. And so when they gave me some of the questions, they were trying to give you guys the questions too. And I said, nope, I'm going to throw them at them. <laughs> so you guys better be full of the Holy Ghost, yeah. full of joy, like we <laughs> talked about in the last episode, full of everything that you need to have to be able to answer these correctly. Amen. And, there are wrong answers, yes. just so you know that, you know. <laughs> we had somebody want to ask, and we had shared that um, uh, uh, Minister Elizabeth and myself, we were married before Christ. And so our, um, it didn't really apply, the question didn't apply to us because somebody asked, well, how did you meet, how did you know that your, how, and they asked Pastor Elliot, how did you know that Randy was the one? And obviously we want to know who the one is in God. Amen. I didn't know that my husband was the one. He was the one when I got saved, and he had to be the one. You know, I met him at a kegger. Um, <laughs> and so it wasn't, oh, God made him the one. It was, I was married, and he had to be the one for the rest of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. What about you, Elizabeth? How did you meet your husband? Uh, I met my husband at a casino. We worked at a <laughs> casino. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, we met as friends, but we I didn't think he was the one because I always said I was not going to get married to a cowboy, and he was the most cowboy person ever. But uh, thank you, Jesus, that when we met God, then he was the one. He was the one for the rest of my life. <laughs> All of a sudden, God made him the Amen. one. You know? And you, Pastor Ellie, you were saved yes. when you met uh, Pastor Randy. So how, how do you feel like you knew he was the one? Well, you know, this scripture, it says um, that the Lord is the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was praying about the Lord to bring me uh, a man for my life and for my future, I needed to find somebody that I could feel comfortable following him mm -hmm. as he follows the Lord. That's right. And so that was pretty much when I was watching how he served the Lord and how he loved the Lord and the things that, you know, he was passionate about were the things that I was passionate about. And so when I began to pray about him, I remember asking the Lord, you know, I had a list of things that I remember you said, <laughs> make sure when you ask the Lord for the things that you're believing God for your husband, make sure you're meeting those things as a wife as well. Because mm -hmm. it's easy for us to make a list and say, this is what I want in a husband while we're over here failing in all those areas. That's yeah. right. As Amen. a woman. And so I remember you mentioning that to me and stuff and you were saying, well, make sure, you know that as you're writing those things down, that you are able to be those things for whoever God has called your husband to be as well. And so when I was praying about him, I was asking the Lord for somebody that I can see myself comfortably following 
him as he follows Christ. Amen. And so as I was watching his relationship with the Lord, that's how I knew, mm -hmm. like, that's the person I'm supposed to be with because I can, it wouldn't be, I, I don't see it being a struggle, like, I'm dragging him to, um, you know, to love the Lord. I'm dragging him to love the things of God, you know. He's already doing those things, and I know he's going to add to me, and I'm going to add to him. Amen. Amen. So that's Amen. I knew. Amen. And so as for you as a, as a woman, in order for you to know this is the one that God has for me, he had to be somebody that you could follow and mm -hmm. that, because he, how he was following Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, when as a, as a man, when a man looks for a wife, because the word says that, that a man finds the wife. Right. And uh, as a man, if you're a, a man right now, you're watching this and you're, you're not married, what should you be looking for in a godly woman? You know, Proverbs 31, yeah. we know that scripture very well. Go there. But you need a woman that is going to follow Christ, number one, first, because of the scripture talks about him being the center. Right. You know, following Christ. And if she can follow Christ, then she can upgird you and follow God with you. Amen. And she Amen. can do that. So make sure you have you find somebody that has God first. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. And that kind of answers another question we had. It says, um, what, can, what questions can I ask a future husband and what do I look for? What do you look for? You answered it perfectly. perfectly. You look for a man that has a heart to follow Christ. Right. And, Already. And, you know, the word says the man follow, looks for the woman. But as he's looking for us women need to make sure that the men that are looking and they're looking at us better be men that are following Christ, amen, you know? Amen. So that, that's a really good question because you want to make sure that you don't make any mistakes, you right. know? Um, there's a lot of, my husband always says, you don't want to marry a good looking mistake. Yeah. You don't want to marry somebody that they looked good, they acted good, but their heart didn't match up to what they were saying. Yeah. Right. And that, the only way you can do that is, is just by, by number one, following Christ listening to the Holy Ghost so he he can oh he will always deter you yeah. and he will always make sure that he leads you down the right path you need to make sure that um, Christ is number one if he's number one then you won't make a mistake right. and if you're walking on in God's perfect perfect plan and you're both walking in God's perfect plan when things happen you're both there to listen to the amen. Holy Ghost amen, amen. Uh, another question what is your biggest, this is a really good question, okay? And Elia, you're, you're newer at this, so what's your biggest advice for the first year of marriage? You know, when um, we um, got married, you know, one of the things that um, we kept in front of us was, was the, you know, what we always talk about is death to independent living. Amen, that's good. And that is, you know, every day waking up, making a decision that I'm going to do everything I can do to be a blessing to my, my husband Amen. or Amen. my, you know, my wife, vice versa. And so making sure that, um, you're waking up in the decisions is this, is what I say going to be for the benefit of my relationship is what Amen. I do going to be Amen. for the benefit of my relationship for the good of the marriage That's good. is what I'm, is the way I'm behaving you know, the things I'm sowing, the things I'm doing, all those things, is it for the benefit of the marriage? And because the first year is when you're cultivating. It's when you're you're planting and you're, you're really spending the most time. Not that you shouldn't spend that much time later in your relationship, but that first year is so crucial because um, that's the time when you're really um, building your foundation. That's right. Amen. And so it's so important to make sure that you're waking up every morning and saying, is this for the good of my marriage? And if it isn't, then don't say it. If it's not, then That's don't good. do it. If Amen. it's not, then Amen. save it, shelf it. You know, again, not that you shouldn't talk about certain things, but certain things are just not for that. Found. It's not for that time when you're trying to build that foundation. That's right. Some mm -hmm. things can wait. Yeah, they mm -hmm. can wait. Yeah. And some things you need to find out before. Right then there, you should have talked about before. before. That's right. That's right. I, I, that is very surprising to yeah. me. You, you get a couple that's married and they're barely finding out that their husband didn't want kids. Yeah. 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 They that's didn't crazy. want kids or, or, or uh, they, they don't like their family, you know, important things like that that <laughs> yes. you probably should have known before you got married. Or that married. they had kids. Yeah. And oh. you didn't know about. Yeah. You know, blended families. How do you yeah. how do you work with that? How do you um, you know another question about blending 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 families together? How do you do it if you do not have God at the center of a That's blended right. family? Yeah, That's right. so difficult. What do we mean by a blended family? His kids, my kids, our kids together, mm -hmm. or you know, in laws, outlaws. You know, you have all this dynamic. If you have a uh, if you have um, like some of my nieces and nephews. Before, we would always get together, and then they ended up having a blended family, and now they have 
two pair, two pairs. Or Christmases. And yes, exactly. They have to go to this mom's, that dad's, <laughs> this mom. Yeah. And it's it's different. It and is if different. you do not have Christ at the center, it will be difficult yes, for you. Yes. It'll be difficult for you. And I remember having this conversation with you when I was praying about the husband that I have now. I remember you you asked me, have you considered he was a minister at the time. Have you considered Minister Randy? And I said, and I looked at you, I remember vividly driving down Mooney, hmm. and we were in my little red car, and we were going to go meet your husband for lunch. <laughs> and I remember I, you said, have you considered Minister Randy? And I said, oh, no. I mean, it was instant. Oh, no, he's got kids. Mm -hmm. And I remember you just looked at me, and you said, did you say that, or did God say that? Mm -hmm. And I said, <laughs> Wow, I didn't pray about him because he has kids and stuff. And so then you said, well, you better make sure that that's a decision that God is, that you're, that you better make sure you're not making a decision and not asking God what he wants, what he wants you to do. And so I can't say I began to pray about him right then because I didn't. Um, shortly after lunch, when I found out he was into motorcycles, I began to pray about him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, and I remember having that conversation with you and you telling me that. And so when he became somebody as an option to pray about, I remember telling the Lord, I know that I cannot do this without you because blended families are not easy. Uh, being a stepmom is not easy. You know, having kids that are not your natural children are not easy. But I told the Lord, I don't want to do this if it's not your plan for my life. And if I can't do it, then I need you to let me know if I can't. And apparently, <laughs> he thought I could because it's been the best thing ever, you know. Amen. God knew that what was best. Yes. You know why? Because those kids love you. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, my gosh. They called me mom from the very beginning. It was yes. just super natural. And some of them are almost your age. Yes. You only, know? One of them's only 12 years younger than me. And when we were in public and she's blonde and blue eyed and I'm Mexican and dark and she's like mom mom and people look at us crazy <laughs> but she's they've always just received me as their mom just from the very beginning even before we were married but mm -hmm. you received them as your children I, did. I think that's I very did. important yes, in a blended family to make sure that that as you you blend this family that the husband receives those those new children that has his children yes and that the wife receives those those children as her children and that the husband and wife left them. Yes. Yeah, left them. I've seen a lot of that yeah. problems where, where the new husband is is trying to discipline the children and the wife won't let him because yeah. those are my, my kids. My children. Yeah, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And that will never, ever work. Yeah. You and know? those are key words to look for yes. when you are speaking to somebody is, are they saying mine? Are they saying yours? They should be saying mm -hmm. ours. Yes. Ours. And if they're not or can't, mm -hmm. then maybe that's not a relationship you should be praying about. Yeah. I was talking to one of my friends, and she was saying that um, her friends were in a relationship, and they were talking about, you know, getting married. And they, they're they a very good couple, and I love them. And one of the 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 future husband, fiance, was saying, you know, I don't like the way um, your daughter's talking to you. And that is not going to happen when we're married. So you need to start fixing that now. Because when we're married, if I come in to try to fix the way your your daughter thinks that she can talk to you, it's going to cause a problem. Start fixing that now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, that that's true. Because you don't yeah. want to come in with a new, no, no, we, we honor and obey our parents. We're yeah. not... Yeah. This new person coming in to fix what, what as you, as, you as a single person, if you're single, those are things that you need to, you know, if, if you get, if you desire to be remarried, is your new husband or new wife, are they going to feel honored and mm -hmm. loved and Amen. respected Amen. by your children right now? What are you sowing into your children? What are you sowing for right now Amen. while you're single? Amen. Very important. Amen. Another question I, we got asked, what do I do? How do I sow for a husband? How do I sell for a husband? And I think you answered it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the best way to sow for a husband is... Or a wife. Or a wife is sow seed into a marriage that you admire, you know, um, hang out with people or ask uh, marriages that you admire, you know, what they did and so into their marriages. It's so important, you know, God teaches teaches us that what we sow, we reap and what better way of sowing, you know, not just finances, maybe even time, maybe, you know, errands or maybe something into a marriage that you desire one day to have, you know, make sure that you're sowing into that marriage to have that kind of marriage. And it's the word, you, you reap mm -hmm. what you sow into. <laughs> That's right. I know um, a couple of single ladies in the church 
man, they were there at every bridal shower, at every wedding, helping, serving, you know, doing stuff, making sure that they were there for their friends and their friends' time when their friends were getting married, mm -hmm. having bridal showers, baby showers. And I remember them saying, oh, no, we are sewing for our yes, future. Yeah, we are yeah, sewing yeah, for yeah, our yeah, future. Absolutely. And one of them is engaged right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what, this mm -hmm. one person, they were, they've were they sewed, sewed, sewed. And this one person that <laughs> that's just sewed, Right now, they got engaged one week, and by the next week, everything that they needed Amen. was paid for. Amen. All these, see, all these seeds that they were sowing into other marriages, yes. all these seeds they were sowing into bridal showers, mm -hmm. baby showers, being there just to, you know, put the ice in the tea to to serve to do. God honored her when yes. it was her time, Amen. you know. Amen. So you, if you're single, make sure that you're sowing, you know, the right things that yes. you want to reap later, Amen. and Amen. you're sowing it for the right reasons, yes. not because you just want something. Amen. <laughs> That's another really good question. One of you can answer, pop in here and answer. My, my marriage is struggling with communication. What can we do? No, <laughs> she likes at me. <laughs> so, so listen, one thing I'm going to tell you, that is something that me and my husband, we've been married 24 years, and, you know, that is something that we struggled with. And, you know, like I've said in the previous episodes, you know, sometimes you struggle with things that the your husband wasn't taught when from That's his right. parents, you know, or that the wife wasn't taught from her parents, you know. And so so that comes up when you get married, you know. And so that was one thing that was a very big challenge to for my marriages. You know, I felt like I would talk, 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 and my husband's a processor, which I didn't know. And then he wouldn't talk to me, so I felt like that there was no communication. It's just... The communication wasn't there because we weren't finding that that neutral ground to where you know when he talks to you um, and giving him time to talk to you but if you're not communicating you have to make sure that you ask why and you have to start praying and asking the Holy Spirit to show you um, when I moved here you know I was barely married five years and you know and I gleaned off of these two amazing women here um, how they did their marriages and you know uh, they always taught us, you know, make sure that you don't start trying to have a conversation the minute they get home from work. They've had a long day, and, and then all of a sudden you want to start communicating um, everything that you're feeling, everything that happened with the kids the minute they walk in the door. There's a perfect time for that communication to flourish, and make sure that, you know, you're you're paying attention. You're paying attention to when your husband gets home, and he's, you know, already showered, and he's relaxed. You know, give that time, but but make sure... You know, one thing that you have to make sure is there are some people, and me being Hispanic, there are some men that um, when you try to talk to them or when there a problem arises, um, they don't talk about it, and then the next day it's like nothing ever happened. So when I first got married at the beginning, to me it was easier for, okay, then I'm just not going to talk about it and let's go on to the next thing. But I saw that it causes problems because it causes all that hurt because you're not fixing what you're supposed mm -hmm. to be fixing. So, you know, the main thing is make sure that you're praying and you're asking the Lord, okay, God, give me that opportunity. And the Holy Spirit will prompt mm -hmm. you and he'll prompt you. And above all, if you're not doing this of putting God first in everything, it's going to be very difficult for that communication to um, to get better mm -hmm. because you have to make sure that you allow God in every area of your life. Even if God's telling you um, you need to wait or you need to, you know, wait till it's the right time. You know, sometimes as women, we just want to blurt everything out and we want to talk, 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 and we don't give them the opportunity and, and then we fix it. That was me. If, if I was talking to my husband and he wasn't doing what I needed or he wasn't, you know, communicating, then I would do it. And so then it ended up being a pattern to where, well, then why did he have to do anything or say anything? Because I would fix it anyway. So <laughs> I, I, it was my fault as far as not allowing him to communicate. So the biggest thing I could say is making sure that you're praying and asking the Lord for the right time. Don't ignore it. Like, don't say, okay, well, we didn't talk about it. We're not going to go back to it. No, make sure that... If something wasn't fixed, if something wasn't resolved, yes, it's a new day. Yes, the mercies are new every morning, but there's still issues that mm -hmm. need to be resolved mm -hmm. or they could become very big issues yeah. and they know that. <laughs> yeah. And as for a husband, knowing that, know this, that just because something hasn't been talked about, something 
is not solved and they're not talking to you about it, it doesn't mean that it's gone away. Yes. And I think as husbands, as men think, oh, well, we're not talking about it. We're, you know, we're just going on to no. That is a yes. festering that can happen in mm -hmm. your marriage. Mm -hmm. And husbands, you need to make sure you're patrolling your hedges, yes, that you're absolutely. making sure that your your boundaries in your home are being protected and you are the protector. Yes. You know, My husband always says that unresolved issues create distance. Yes. You'll wake up one day and there's so much of distance between you and your spouse because all those little foxes came yes. in and destroyed that absolutely. vine. Because, oh, we're not talking. Well, she's not talking. I'm not talking. It's just not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the way it is. That's right. And, and here is the big, big thing. If you as a spouse, man or woman, are not talking if you're not allowing your wife that that time to say hey I need you as a husband to talk to me we, we have these issues whether with the kids or finances or whatever it may be we need to talk if the the spouse whether it be the woman or the man isn't allowing that the enemy will come in mm -hmm. and ha yes. allow another man make sure someone's another there. Uh, make sure another man or yep. another woman is there amen. to listen mm -hmm. because you're not listening amen. And you don't amen. want that yeah. you don't want that amen we that is something that my husband and I are like, oh no, we close the door to that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Another good, really, really good question. Elia, I'll let you talk about this is how do you make sure that finances don't get in the way of our relationship? You know, um, that's also something that you definitely need to talk about before you even get married. Well, mm -hmm. the, what you're saying that is what you, one of the questions is how to know what is the right time to get into a relationship. All of these things you should know before. Yes. Kids, yes. And marriage, all yes. of these yes. things you should know before. Family. Yes. yes. <laughs> you should know beforehand. And so, you know, and, and as Elizabeth said earlier, is just making sure that you're doing everything God's way. And so when it comes to your finances, mm -hmm. it's another aspect. Unfortunately, just like everything else, there is a part of your marriage that's business. Hon honestly, it's, it's, it's business. It's, it's you have to take care, you know, you, there's finances you have to take care of. You, there's bills you have to take care of. There's, you know, deadlines you have to meet for whatever reasons in your house. So there's a business part of ma marriage too. People often think, oh, well, there, you know, there's no uh, part for that. There's no time for that. There's no area. There is. And, and that is part of that. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a business part. It's not personal. Uh, this isn't an attack against you. This is, you know, these are real situations that we need to talk about, you know. And so one of the tools that we use is, is honestly, is deadlines, mm -hmm. you know. Like, I know you don't want to talk about this, and I notice that every time I talk to you about mm -hmm. this, this is the behavior or this is the response I get. So let's write this down, and we're going to pick a time and pray about a day when we're going to have a conversation about this. And like you said, deal with it, but don't. But you deal with it on God's timing. Amen, amen. And so that's one of the things is finances is that, you know, it can cause issues. Finances, yes. children, and uh, intimacy. Those are the things that we've noticed that can cause the most issues in your relationship. And if you allow it, it can become this thorn yes. in your relationship mm -hmm. that you can't ever talk about. There's, you're always edgy about certain things. And so it's really important to make sure that you don't allow it to get in the way. How? How do you do that? Trust. You trust God in your spouse to make the right decision, and you rely on the Holy Spirit in yourself to make sure you're making the right decisions when it comes to your finances. And then one thing that they have taught us, too, if you're planning on getting married, it's not my bank account, her bank oh, account, yeah. my money, my paycheck. It's together. together. It's together. And if you have been like well this is mine that's hers then that's where the biggest issues are because there is no unity in your finances mm -hmm, right. so how can your finances flourish and prosper if there's no unity in the decisions that you're making for your mm -hmm. finances that's yeah. very important and making sure that you're um, taking your it's like people come to the god and they get married and they bring their marriage into the covenant they bring their children into the covenant but you need to bring your finances right. into yes, the covenant absolutely. you need to bring your finances why do what do we mean by that are you tithing? Are you giving to your local, not our church, but your local church? Are you doing those things? Does your future husband want you to do those things? Yes. Is that an area that you're going to struggle with? And if you know, you're struggling fun, now. if you're struggling now, you need to yes. fix that now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing too is, is um, who's better at finances? Right. Is yeah. it the husband or is mm -hmm. it the wife? Is the husband better? My husband is way better at saving money than I am. Yeah, I'm better at making sure things are being paid than he is. But he together, oh, together we're, we're great at it. Mm -hmm. So making sure that the person that is anointed to do the finances um, is doing it, Amen. but that doesn't negate the other person from asking about it and knowing, what can I help, right. what can I do? Yeah. So very, those are really, really big questions, and we're out of time here, but um, 
There's so many other questions here. Maybe we'll have to do another yes. one, you know. <laughs> Maybe we'll ask your pastor, well, let us do one more of these, you know. <laughs> but so many things. And, and please go back and listen yes, to the other messages. And we know that um, if you apply the things that the Lord has showed us and the things that, that God will show you personally, yes, if you apply absolutely. those things, and your number one goal is to get closer to God, to have a better relationship, yes. to have a better marriage. God will help you. Amen. We Amen. love you. Thank you so much for watching us. Again, like and subscribe to, to this channel so that you can be alerted every time that we're on. We Amen. love you, and God bless you, and we call you blessed.